Hi, this is Christian Baker from christianbaker.net. Welcome to this episode of the Achieve podcast. For this episode, I have the pleasure in bringing you Queen of Bikers, Maria Costello, MBE. So Maria, thank you for joining us today and welcome to the Achieve podcast. It's great to finally be here. How long have we been trying to do this? this well, I have spoken about it for quite some time. So yeah, like you, I'm glad we've finally been able to uh, make it happen. Um, I also must say, We've known each other for a long time now. Um, I was trying to, th- to work it out the other day, but it's well over 10 years at least, isn't it? It is. And when, a- when did you get your MBE? I got my MBE in 2010. Well, and it's definitely before that that we kind of first met. So it's definitely over 10 years, isn't it? And that's one of the reasons why um, I asked if you could come on as a guest. Um, you know, I've known you for a long time. You've achieved an awful lot in your career. Um, in your life, um, you. not without its kind of setbacks along the way. So as it is the Achieve podcast, where I like to bring people on to talk about success, achievement, personal development, I thought you'd be a great guest to come on and share some of your story with us. So Maria, in your career, how important has mindset been to your success and your achievements? Absolutely huge. Um, I don't know whether I realized that at the beginning. Um, I definitely realized, and that's why I reached out to you all those years ago. Um, I was in a really bad place. Um, I'd really hurt myself. I'd had a lot of broken bones. I was still racing, um, but wasn't enjoying it, wasn't being competitive. Um, but some something was still dragging me along into the sport and uh, I knew I needed some help. Um, I was totally overwhelmed with how everything was. I couldn't get a clear mindset at all. And um, I I won't lie, we had one meeting before I went away to the Manx Grand Prix. Um, It was an important Manx Grand Prix because I got my mojo back and I really do put that down to a a lot of it down to your help and the fact that you know just that first meeting made such an impact on me I um and I, I got my mojo back and that's why I've had 10 more years of racing since then I you know we've we've we have you have been through a lot with me um, I'd already had 10 years of my career, but I wanted it to continue and you've helped, you've made that happen. It's been a pleasure to, to be a small part in that. And it has been an eventful 10 years to say the <laughs> least, doesn't it? Um, what do you think caused you to, you know, to, this isn't today about you necessarily sharing the work we've done together or anything like that, but it's more about you kind of sharing with people, um, you know, part of your journey, if you like. Um, so what, what do you think kind of prompted you to reach out when you did? You know, there's lots of people out there in the world, you know, at the time of recording this, you know, we're in the middle of the pandemic. Um, you know, people go through different times, different events in their lives where people do find themselves struggling for whatever reason. For you personally, what do you think kind of triggered you to reach out when you did? I, like I said, I, I was still racing. Um, it felt really hard and was just getting harder. I, I am open to, um, you know, getting help from other people. I tried counselling um, and um, good old social media had put you in front of me. And I remember it was Twitter at the time, wasn't it? Good old Twitter. Yeah. And... I, I guess I was a little bit desperate as well, you know, because racing so important to me. Um, I was I was going to a massive event at the Isle of Man um, where, you know, it's super dangerous and you need to have your head straight. For all manner of reasons, it, it just needs to be right for you to be able to compete there. And... Um, I knew I needed help. I'm so glad I reached out. I know that can be the hardest thing for a lot of people. And um, of course I didn't know if it would would help me or work for me, but 
but ultimately it does. And, you know, obviously at the beginning it was, it was different to how it is now because I've learned a lot of skills and you've given me a lot of tools to deal with a lot of things myself. That that's the biggest takeaway I think from having your support and learning from you. And that's, you know, I, I don't need to speak to you as often as I did initially. And, um, but yeah, it, it was a massive turnaround and all throughout this, you know, I still see this as an extension of my career, even though it's 10 years. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's a big thing for me. Have and I, I would like, you know, anyone watching or listening to take that away that, you know, you can learn skills, you can learn techniques, you can learn strategies. And I'm forever, and I know I've had this conversation with you numerous times over the years, that if you kind of um, approach your kind of well-being, your mental health, your mental wellness, almost as mind fitness, like you would your physical fitness, that it's something you can continuously um, enhance, improve and develop. But once you learn a set of skills, then you're empowered and equipped to be able to help yourself much more than um, previously so you know if, if anyone's kind of watching or listening to this uh, and they're not in a great place for whatever reason um, would you say that you would what would you say to them would you encourage them to 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 Absolutely. reach out to something or someone what would you what would you encourage them to do yeah I think that's the biggest part I mean I, in the past I definitely have struggled with depression it, it, it wasn't just about that obviously I came to you initially because it was about my sport yeah. and like you say um, physical training for me is that's just a given you know that's so important for me to be able to race a motorbike but the mental side of things is probably even more important when it comes to sport and competition and being able to go out and achieve your goals and I and I was not working on that as much and um, that's that's where you've helped me put the tools in place and these strategies in place to be able to deal with how hard my sport can be. And um, so the hardest thing is reaching out, of course. Um, and I think also as, as much as, you know, to some people you might you might seem physically invincible with all your pins and plates and everything else that's happened to you over the years. But the reality is as humans, none of us are invincible. None of us are indestructible. Um, and, and we can go through waves in our life where we're not feeling as great or as strong or as happy as we'd like to be, but it's not a fixed state. It can change, as you've well learned over the years, that there have been ups and downs, there's been setbacks. So on that note, before we talk a bit more about some of the fun stuff that you've done and achieved in your life, if you've reached one of those times in your sport, in your life, whether it be from an injury um, or things not working out for you on race day, how do you kind of deal with kind of setbacks that, that occur in your life and in your sport? What's the best approach you found to, to deal with it? Wow, that's a huge question. Um, I think... Oh, What's some of the ways? Yeah, ultimately, I love what I do. I love my sport. And even though I've broken 24 bones, which sounds crazy to some people, you know, why would you keep going back and then hurting yourself? Surely that's not enjoyable. Of course, that part isn't, but it's the rest of it that is. And that's what makes me want to return. And um, I think it's, it's about finding that way to deal with what's happening now, but look forward and you know, maintain your goals and yeah, maybe, maybe you need to go on a slightly different route to get to your, where you're going. And, and that's where your, you know, hypnotherapy has helped me. It's, it's dealing with, okay, it's different right now, but things can change. I think, I think that's a massive thing that things can change for the worse very quickly in the blink of an eye, but also they can change for the better in that same time period in the blink of an eye. It's, um, yeah, you've, you've definitely shown me a lot of that and that has kept me going. And I think it's fair to say that over the years, lots has changed for you. And as your career's evolved, um, you've moved in different directions. But if you could, could look back at the beginning of your career when you first started 
um, your relationship with your motorbike, would you ever have imagined or believed that you could have achieved and enjoyed some of the things that you've done? No. And again, that's where it's really good to talk to you because you, I, I very quickly move on. I mean, I came from a family in a council house. There was no motorbikes in my family. I found it as a mode of transport and, and then went racing. I mean, nobody would ever have imagined, including me, that that was where I was going to go. I mean, I'm so glad I found it. Um, but yeah, what, I ha what has happened it's in my life is almost unreal. And it's important, isn't it, to look back. You've helped me go, no, look at what you've achieved. Look at what you've got through. Look at what you've overcome. And, and reminding yourself that actually you are stronger than you think you are. I don't think it's important. It's, it's human nature that we tend to focus on what we haven't done or we, what we haven't done yet. And we quickly move on. And um, I think it's, you know, really important. It's some kind of encourage people to do all the time is to, you know, give themselves credit, however big or small that achievement might be. It might not be getting the fastest lap here or racing that or getting that, but the small wins are just as important as some of the big ones. So we need to give credit and acknowledge them um, as we go. If you could go back and speak to your younger self, what, what advice, what, what would you share with them? How, what, what would that conversation look like if you could go back and uh, give your younger self some words of encouragement? I, I, I mean, it's a long time ago. <laughs> We're talking like 24 years ago. You must have learned a lot in that time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh gosh, I was a different person and obviously determined um, because this sport isn't easy for anyone. And um, a different, I was fueled by a different fire then. And uh, I thought I had a point to prove, you know, I was going into a male dominated sport. I was often the uh, only female in the paddock that was racing and it felt like a bit of a battle. And uh, don't get me wrong, it, it's still like that in some ways, but I've found my place in the sport. Uh, what would I tell my younger self? Believe in yourself more. Believe in yourself more. Yeah, for sure. I think you could tell your current day self that as well, couldn't you? Well, that's something that we constantly work on. And I do think that's, you know, I've been really fortunate. I've met amazing sportsmen and women, thanks to, you know, what I do. And... I think it's really, you know, I was really lucky to meet them anyway, but then when you get the chance to talk to them and you realise that they're human too, and that actually they have to work on their self-belief too, that helps you. Um, yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not superwoman. I'm not anything special. I'm, I'm just me and I'm just working hard to achieve what I want to achieve. And, and I think that's a point that's worth pausing on for a moment because I think sometimes particularly in today's world where we're bombarded with the highlights of people's success and achievement whether that be in sport whether that be in life and, and social media is a fantastic tool you know introduced us so it you know it's a pretty good one but I think people don't see what's gone on behind the scenes and and I think I've met and worked with some amazing people over the years and I, I have to say that you're probably one of the most hard-working focused driven motivated individual that I've ever worked with and I don't think people necessarily see all of that behind the scenes so if someone's looking in at your life what's the probably the biggest misconception misunderstanding people have had with regards to the success and the achievement that you've had yeah I think um they uh, it's difficult to talk about this but people do think that I'm rich <laughs> and that I have everything I need I suppose they look at me and in lots of ways of course I'm living the dream I, I feel that I'm living the dream but uh, it's not an easy um, dream at times you know I am yeah flat out behind the scenes to try and make everything happen and keep everything going and um, it's not Easy, easy going racing because you need the financial backup and you know then you need the machinery then you need the right people around you um and obviously I do a lot of that myself um a lot yeah and uh, I've ridden for teams in the past and um that 
does come with benefits, but there are often downsides as well because everyone has their own agenda and um, yeah, learn an awful lot through the years of how to enable myself to go racing. Um, I mean, ultimately, I love what I do. That's, that's what's key here because that's what drives me. Um, and I'm so lucky that I still love what I do. Um, so would you say that's kind of a key or part of the recipe for the success and the, 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 the career you've had that you love what you do, you, you want it so badly that you always find a way to make it happen? Yeah, I think that's it in a nutshell. You know, I snapped my femur a couple of times and I still want to go back and race motorcycles because it's it's the best thing that I've ever done. It's I've achieved things in my life that I never dreamed of and I and I do still have some goals that I can go after even though I've been racing for 24 years and um yeah I, I mean it's taken me all over the world I've met amazing people I ride amazing motorcycles and uh, I feel like the luckiest woman on the planet fantastic and I know you get you like you say you get to see and meet and some amazing people and get some great opportunities. And I know one of the things that you've done before is you've gone and spoken to school children. You've spoken at after dinner events where you share your story and, and what's the resounding message that you like to, to give people when you have the opportunity to speak to them? I think, I think the obviously, you know, the fact that I'm a woman standing in front of them talking about doing a sport that isn't necessarily seen as a sport for women it is already sending a message across but ultimately I feel really lucky that I found my passion in life and I think if you've got a passion in life you can go far you know I think it it, it makes your life feel complete so I especially if it's young children you know and they're you know go after your goals, find something you love, um, try lots of different things um, and just, yeah, go for it. Brilliant. I think as well, part of that as well, sometimes in my experience of working with people that often if people don't have a burning passion for something like you do, it's sometimes hard for them to know what to do, but that often then stops people from going after anything. Whereas if people just kind of took a step forward as your career has shown that when you move forward, you never know what amazing opportunities around the corner and, and your career has evolved and changed somewhat. So how have you found that journey to adapt and evolve to different kind of uh, stages of your career? Yeah. So everything that I've done, of course, comes with a massive dose of fear and unknown and, that's the big that's the biggest little step forward isn't it stepping into the unknown um and and obviously feeling the fear but doing it anyway and learning how to do that is massively important in life um with whatever you do you you know you go out and experience as much of life as you can that's what it's for and it's not always comfortable definitely not yeah, getting used to feet, you know, get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and then it becomes comfortable. And like you were saying, I, I'm not, I'm not constantly self-confident. I'm not a massively confident person. I have to work on that all the time. So that's why I have to push. Um, but ultimately it, you know, it lets you go after amazing things. And when you take action and move forward, good things can happen. Exactly. Exactly. So before we move on to where you are now and what the future looks like for you in terms of goals and, and what you would like to achieve next, what as you look back on your career, and I know we've only got a short amount of time and I've glossed over a few things. <laughs> if anyone would like to find out more about you, um, obviously you've got your book, The Queen of Bikers. Um, you've got your website and your social media where people can go and, and fill in some of the gaps and get some more of your backstory. But if you were to summarise what have been some of the key highlights um, of your career, some of the things you've enjoyed or some of the things that you would consider the biggest achievements, what would some of those be? Okay, so 
there is quite a list. Obviously, <laughs> standing on the podium, becoming the first woman to stand on the podium in a race around the TT course at the Max Grand Prix. Just um, for people who are not necessarily familiar with your sport, can you just share at what speed that happens, please? Yeah, sure. So a, a lot of my achievements have been at the Isle of Man TT. So this is, you know... Uh, a unique event that happens on the Isle of Man, a little tiny island in the Irish Sea. The course is made up of real roads. These are roads that run past people's houses. They're the roads that are usually used by us, you know, getting to work. They get shut and the public can't use them and we get to race around them. Um, we're reaching speeds of 160, 180, 190 miles an hour. Um, the course is 37.73 miles long. That's over 200 corners to learn per lap. We do races that last four to six laps long. We obviously have to pit every two for um, fuel. And yeah, um, my average um, around there is uh, nearly 160 miles an hour per lap. So, um, and the top boys now are doing 135 miles per hour, um, which is outrageous. So I think it's fair to say where some of these fears, um, <laughs> some of these uncomfortable feelings can come from. Yeah, I mean, though, the, the weird thing is that when I do something new now, people often say to me, but you do the TT. You can't <laughs> be scared of anything. But the TT has become my norm, yeah. which is yeah. a very, you know... Not a lot of people can say that, but that's what I do. That's what but I that do. goes back to what we were saying earlier, isn't it? That I know that's on a much bigger scale, but things aren't always comfortable. But the more you do it, the more familiar they become. Exactly. So exactly. it's just just do it and uh, yeah. get comfortable. So I interrupted you there. So getting the fastest lap at the TT. Well, then I, then I went on to become the fastest female around the TT. Held that for five years. Um, then I got podiums at the Manx Grand Prix um, and then I got um, a third place at the Classic TT and that meant the most to me because I stood on the podium with my hero John McGuinness who's won 23 TTs. For sure if we're both on super bikes at the TT I'm, I'm not in his league but being on the classic bikes um, it was more of a level, level playing field for me so that meant the absolute world and, and i've heard I'm, his name mentioned an awful lot over the years so i know to stand next to him on the podium must have been a, oh, a real special moment for you yeah for him to sort of rub my head and go that lap time's really decent maria like you deserve to be here meant even more um then i added in sidecar racing so i added another as week. you do you, you say <laughs> say all these things as if they're just a normal natural thing to do and became the first woman to race both a sidecar and a solo at TT that happened last year, despite awful weather and us not really getting much practice. Um, yeah, um, I've raced all over the world, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa. I was the first woman to be invited to race at Goodwood. I get to ride amazing motorcycles from BMW, from the museum in Munich. Um, yeah. And what about the little visit to the palace and your meeting with uh, Prince Charles? You've... <laughs> Getting the MBE, being awarded an MBE, blew me away. Yeah, that was almost hard to accept at first. And I really didn't think it was real at first. I thought uh, it was a joke letter that had come through the post. I can see why. I remember at the time, <laughs> you struggling to get your head around it. And uh, But that was huge. That was huge. And, In what way was that big for you? I know we've had the conversation. Yeah. And... Is it the kind of recognition? Is it the acknowledgement? What what's what makes that kind of particularly special for you? It was it was everything. It was all of that. It was massive for me, person, huge for me personally, um, huge for women in sport, women in motorsport, women in motorcycling. Um, but then I realised it was massive because it meant so much to my family. And my family have struggled with me racing since I started. They didn't want me to do it. They were against it. They didn't, you know, they didn't intentionally make it hard, but they made it hard. And um, well, it's not safe as doing netball or something like that, is it? 
exactly and they didn't understand it at all yeah. they didn't understand it and of course I started breaking bones and then they really yeah. didn't understand it like you say you weren't from a family or a world of of kind of people in motorsport were you so you're kind no. of paving the way for the first time for your family to kind of my get the head around dad it. had no idea I could use spanners and obviously I was learning but um, so it was massive for them because they suddenly realized hang on a minute the royal family think our daughter's done something good so she's so she hasn't just been wasting her time riding these motorcycles and um and obviously I've put them through a lot it's uh, I know that it's difficult watching your daughter go to the TT and uh that's and you got to share that with them, didn't, didn't you? They got to share that day with you. Oh, the day was incredible. So I've, I've, really didn't happen, though, didn't it? It didn't happen because I'm very tight with money because <laughs> I'm a bike racer. Didn't book a hotel and uh, drove down that morning and got stuck in traffic. And I really thought I was going to miss it. Ended up getting a friend who has, you know, works for a limo bike company. He, I remember ringing him up. He was going, aren't you supposed to be at the palace? And I'm like, exactly, Damien. Can Help. You <laughs> Left my family on the side of the road in my car, um, to which my dad started driving then to the palace. As I arrive at the palace, my sister's ringing me. They've got lost in London. And the, the policeman on the gate's like, you can't, you can't be on the phone in the palace. Let me t- take that. And they actually guided my family in. I had no idea that they were going to make it in time. I thought I'd really messed up, really messed up. And then walk, you get walked, you know, you get all your briefing and told you're going to meet Prince Charles and how to do your curtsies and then uh, walk through the back of the ballroom. And that's when I spotted them and the relief was massive. I mean, I didn't care if I tripped up in front of Prince Charles, then I was so happy my family were there. So, um, and it was massive. It was massive for my dad, who finally showed that he was proud of me because he was a very old fashioned man and uh, had never shown that before. So this was a very, huge. very special moment. I mean, as with a lot of your life, it's very colourful and uh, almost <laughs> sounds like some sort of movie with the, you know, nearly yeah. not quite making it. And then you did and oh, a, a good, really. a good, happy ending. It was stressful, but what an ending. Yeah. Fantastic. Any other highlights from your, uh, or anything that you'll take with you into uh, the next chapter of your life? Well, you know, I, it's good that you remind me to look at what I've achieved. I mean, the publishing my book was a big thing. That was something that also came out just before my dad died. So that was massive. And, um, but unfortunately the, the publisher went out of business and um, you can't get that anymore but just now I've republished it and we've done um, an exclusive number of books um, that I've been overwhelmed with how many people want these it's blown me away Um, and uh, we will be printing a paperback in the new year Um, but yeah so that's that's it's exciting yeah yeah and obviously you know I still want to be racing motorbikes and I do still have some goals in the sport that I want to achieve. And uh, hopefully we can get back to that next year. Um, Everything crossed. Yeah, exactly. Uh, But so for anyone who does want to find out more and has perhaps been inspired by a snapshot of your, your life and your story, the book's a great place to go and uh, kind of find out more about the, the trials and tribulations, the ups and downs of uh, your your racing career and your life. Your you've mentioned things you want to achieve in the future. So you know I've mentioned a couple of times that you know in the time we've known each other, you things have evolved and new opportunities have come your way. So where do you see the kind of the next chapter, the instalment of your life and your career going now? Yeah. So it, it is. I mean, my whole life has been about evolving and you know moving into new eras like initially it was modern bikes and then adding in the classic bikes and then adding in the sidecars and then go racing in different countries but also I need to evolve outside of the racing side of things and this is again scary and unknown but thanks to your support I've gone on to start doing some presenting work um, tv work and um, 
that's sort of the area where I want to move into more and doing more of my speaking, going back to doing that. I used to do loads with Sport England and loads in schools, but, I, you know, my story has been used as well by businesses, you know, and uh, I'd like to do more motivational speaking for sure. So that's something that I'm trying to grow into right now. And um, Well, as with everything you do, I'm sure you'll make a great success of it. But again, it's great that you're forward thinking enough to think about how you can kind of apply what you've learned and your story to help others. And I think as we started the conversation, I don't think you realized over the years how important, how strong your mindset was. And I think you can apply that to any area, whether that be life, whether that be sport or whether that be business. So um, I can see why you would get asked to speak to different audiences to share your story. Yeah. And weirdly, you know, again, people think that I'm super brave, obviously doing the TT course and road racing all over the world, but standing in front of big audiences, I have to work on that as well. Um, but again, it's, you've helped me with the whole mindset for these things and, um, you know, in, increasing my self belief really. One of the other things that's important that's linked in with that. And, and that's the importance of looking after yourself. Um, you know, we've spoken before again about viewing your self, whether that be your energy, whether that be, um, confidence, belief, almost a little bit like, um, the charge on your phone or the fuel in your, in your bike, you don't let those things run empty. You, you constantly keep them charged. So in your life with the demands, um, that you have and the heavy schedule you have at times, how do you keep yourself, kind of charged and focused and motivated to, to do everything yeah normally my year is crazy and I do feel like I'm often running on empty because um, I don't just ride the bike I drive the truck I load the truck um, I have to do all the organizing planning get the sponsorship in look after my sponsors all my social media etc etc it is still I'm tired just listening from me and uh, I don't have a massive team of people it's only when I go racing that I have those extra people um supporting me otherwise it's it's me alone making it all work so yeah you've taught me how important it is like like you say I wouldn't let my bike run empty on fuel but I can easily let myself and um so it's a yeah I've but you've given me those skills to remind myself to do that and make that a part of my routine for so sure outside, this of, outside of racing what kind of things do you like to do then well it's, it's about obviously my training does play a part in that that's that's very important for mental health as much as it is physical and um but getting the downtime having those moments I mean I don't I'm not great at meditation, but just having those moments, I use your audio. Um, that's something that I have to work on again to remind myself to do. It, it's like doing stretches after exercise. You don't always do it. And then you realize that you should have. Um, so, yeah. Um, I mean, it's been such a different year this year. You usually I'm, um, I don't have though, you know, it's so hard to find downtime and those moments for myself. This year has been the opposite. And um, so I, I'm ready for it to be busy again. <laughs> More than ready by the sounds of it. So Maria, if there's a, a, a young girl listening or anybody who's listening and has a goal with that be in motor racing or something else, what words of encouragement, what, what would you say to them? Just to summarise everything we've said today, what, what would be your kind of parting words of wisdom to, to uh, encourage people to, to follow their dreams, to, to go after the things they want to achieve? I mean, self-belief is so important. Like you said, like, what would I tell my younger self? I think that's what I'd tell anyone is um, really find and work on that self-belief that's going to drive you forward ultimately you love something even if you're not good at something but you want to be good at something it's it's finding that inner belief and work on it and go for it really fantastic do you have any um kind of favorite quotes sayings or mantras or or, or things you say to yourself to to kind of 
help with that or to help keep you focused on your goals and the things you want to achieve? There's probably quite a few. I think that, I mean, just staying determined, I have to remind myself that I can do it. Just, yeah, you can do this. Just that gentle reminder from time to time. Yeah. I mean, when I go racing and my mechanic used to always have a brilliant pep talk for me. He'd just say, you can do this, you know, this is what you do. Go out and do it. And that stuck with me. That guy doesn't work with me anymore, but his words still resonate in my head. So that that helps sometimes. Absolutely. Well, before we come to a close, because I'm mindful that, um, you know, you are a busy lady and you've uh, got a lot of things to do. If you could wave a magic wand, if anything was possible, what is there one thing or is there some things that you would like to achieve in your life or in your career that you haven't yet? Oh, yeah, there's still. (laughs) I knew the answer was yeah. (laughs) It was always going to be yes. Obviously, there's there's the racing. I, I still want to, well, I have goals. I, I want to become the fastest woman on three wheels around the TT course. I've done it on two, why not three? So that's a goal. Yeah, absolutely desperate to get back to the racing. But I think, um, you know, growing and evolving, um, I want to do more work and presenting. And because I used to think I could race forever, but maybe my body won't let me race forever. 24 broken bones. I do have the odd niggle. Thanks to everybody that keeps me going on that side of things. Um, But yeah, I need to look outside slightly of the race and definitely not moving totally away because it's my love. But um, yeah, do more stuff in the media. um, uh, So plenty to keep you busy. I think so. Yeah, yeah. But you're, you're not done yet. There's plenty more that you are ready and wanting and uh, looking forward to enjoying and achieving in the future. Yeah, and I, I'm still going to be keeping you busy too. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to it. I look forward to it. So before we finish, um, if anyone want, does want to find out more about you, Maria, where's the best place for them to uh, come and find you? Yeah, um, my website at the moment is costelloracing.com. Um, social media, Maria Costello Racing, Maria Costello MBE. Uh, on all the usual platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm having a new website built as we speak. You know, my branding is going to slightly change as we were talking about evolving. So again, this is something new and unknown, but looking forward to announce all that as well. And um, and hopefully talk about some plans for racing next year, which um, is what it's all about everything crossed for you so uh, there you go if you would like to find out more whether you're into racing or you're just inspired by um the things that maria has achieved and continues to go on to achieve then go and uh, go and check her out and, and and find out more about what she's up to and uh, take what you can from it. and that's the same whenever you listen to these or watch these interviews always ask yourself you know as as, as fantastic as the story and the, and the guests are think about you know what you can take away and what you can apply to you and your life so maria thank you so much for sharing all of that with you with us today it's a great speech as always and uh, i thank you for uh, coming on today thank you thank you very much Take care, everyone, and uh, remember what your mind believes you will achieve. And if any of you are interested in that audio that Maria mentioned, pop over to my website, which is christianbaker.net, and you can grab a free audio to help you to relax and unwind. Take care, everyone.